The Massachusetts Institute of Technology Invention has been dubbed a real-life matrix. Terry, you know, they pioneered the internet, DARPA, and now they are pioneering uh, our interface to our brain. And if you think the internet is big, if you think blockchain is big, this is going to blow it all away. Because there's nothing bigger than connecting our minds to the internet. It's almost as if they're either trying to harness or to recreate what is commonly referred to as a collective consciousness. For we are opposed around the world by a monolithic and ruthless conspiracy that relies primarily on covet means for expanding its sphere of influence, on infiltration instead of invasion, on subversion instead of elections, on intimidation instead of free choice, on guerrillas by night instead of armies by day. They know that if they can control people by controlling their minds, then they don't need to fire any shots. They don't need bullets. They don't need the war machine. It is a system which has conscripted vast human and material resources into the building of a tightly knit, highly efficient machine that combines military, diplomatic, intelligence, economic, scientific, and political operations. The collective consciousness fits into the model of the one world religion, the one world government, and the one world dictator or leader. Its preparations are concealed, not published. Its mistakes are buried, not headlined. Its dissenters are silenced, not praised. No expenditure is questioned, no rumor is printed, no secret is revealed. The goal of creating artificial intelligence was for them to become gods, to create a collective mind, a global computer that sees all, sees everything, to, to create an all-seeing eye. So Google was set up 18, 19 years ago to build a giant artificial supercomputer based on the neuron activities of the hive mind of humanity with billions of people wired into it with the Holy internet of shit. things and so all of our thoughts go into it and we're actually building a computer that has real neurons in real time that's also psychically connected to us that are organic creatures right now we're inside a computer program is it really so hard to believe Google was born partially out of CIA and NSA research grants for mass surveillance. In fact, the Internet itself is a product of the U.S. government. It's true. The Internet started as ARPANET through Pentagon-funded research at MIT and Harvard. The Pentagon often buys services from some of the very companies it helped create. Apple, Google, Facebook, Microsoft, PayPal, all of these technology giants have relationships with the military intelligence complex. But the relationship I want to focus on tonight is that of the U.S. government and Amazon. I became a security specialist for SIS, specializing in executive protection, also risk and threat assessment uh, to our clients. Our clients are the companies or the individuals that we contract out with and provide services for. And it was in that context uh, that I became aware of uh, what I describe as a social engineering program and uh, a research and development program that was being carried out by SIS uh, and our clients in Seattle, uh, the Amazon Corporation. And I later learned that they were indeed experimenting with, when I say experimenting, voice to skull, hive mind, behavior modification technology that is frequency based and directed at a targeted individual to basically control their entire person. Over the last few years has been to really delve deep into AI. The CIA is heavily funding these efforts in order to have predictive technology that will determine outcomes. It is called the sentient world simulation. The program's aim, according to its creator, is to be a continuously running, continually updated mirror model of the entire planet complete with billions of nodes representing every person on the Earth. Right now, we're inside a computer program? Is it really so hard to believe? At the time of initial reports on the program five years ago, there were only 62 country-level simulations being run by the U.S. Department of Defense. These simulations grouped humans into composites, with 100 individuals acting as a single node. But already at that time, the U.S. Army had used the systems to create a one-to-one-level simulation of potential Army recruits. 
It's the stuff of a Hollywood movie, but a group of veterans has filed a lawsuit against the CIA and U.S. Army claiming that the government planted remote control devices in their brains. The claims relate to a government program at the U.S. Army's Edgewood Arsenal in Maryland. The ultimate aim would be to archive enough data on each individual to be able to make a computer model of everyone on the planet. Right now, we're inside a computer program. Is it really so hard to believe? This was a white paper put out by Purdue University in 2006, and the sentient world simulation, SWS, went live in 2007, which represents every person on the planet within this computer matrix as a node, and every node is given an avatar, an identifier. And that is real-time, 24-7 monitoring of every person on the planet. This is primarily, but not exclusively, facilitated by the adiabatic quantum computers produced by D-Wave Corporation. And again, we've been tracking the company D-Wave as well as its connection to Google and NASA and Lockheed Martin as well. These are all companies that have invested in the D-Wave. What these people have done is turn this technology into a video game. And that is exactly how they approach it. They approach it as though they are playing a cross between Sid Meier's civilization on their computer and Sims, where they are controlling all of civilization and also controlling people on the individual level. Talk often about the quantum computers, the kind of ability they've got to map and model humanity itself because of this internet of things that is all around us now as well, we're feeding all of our information back into this quantum computer that's basically got a virtual world where all of us have a digital avatar in there. They're able to manipulate the digital avatar in a virtual world, and that's actually translated to effects in the real world. The MK Ultra in the 21st century. Victims are typically subject to hundreds of neuro attacks each day. Memory attacks, verbal entrainment, visual entrainment, two-dimensional images, short videos, dream modulation, neuro-linguistic programming thoughts, images, holograms, etc. into the minds of the victims. Targets of this technology nearly universally experience the symptoms of tinnitus or ringing in the ears and or fossing which is kind of a light show that's uh, uh, provided to the TI because the, their optical nerve is being disrupted by this stream of electromagnetic energy. We are entering that world of Neo-Sapiens where there is going to be a reality beyond anything any human being has experienced in the past. Right now, we're inside a computer program. Is it really so hard to believe? These nanobots, these blood cell sized devices, will be going in our bodies. Uh, we'll have some go inside our brains through the capillaries, non invasively. They'll be interacting with our biological neurons. So they'll put our brains on the internet. And they'll also enable us to enter a virtual reality environment from within the nervous system. So if I want to go in a virtual reality environment, the nanobots will shut down the signals coming from my real eyes and my real skin and create the signals that would be appropriate for the virtual environment and then it'll feel like I'm in that environment. Call it hallucinating, right? But these would be controlled uh, hallucinations run by algorithms. You can imagine us entering entirely living in the real world as we do now, and also living in this virtual world uh, where they are combined in a, in, right inside our mind. Right now, we're inside a computer program. Is it really so hard to believe? This... This isn't real. What is real? How do you define real? If you're talking about what you can feel, what you can smell, what you can taste and see, then real is simply electrical signals interpreted by your brain. And we call it hallucinating, right? But these would be controlled uh, hallucinations run by algorithms so that when that person goes to speak out about it when they go to seek help from their fellow human beings and their fellow human beings say what is it that's happening to you the target will then say i'm hearing voices inside my head but these would be controlled uh hallucinations run by algorithms and they will conclude that this person must be crazy 
and as a result they will recommend psychological evaluation for that person you can see the way this is gonna go and the way it is going right now as good people helpless people that are being abused and tortured and enslaved and experimented upon in America today American citizens cry out for help from their fellow Americans and their fellow Americans say why don't you take some Prozac because we think you're schizophrenic when this is a highly technical program all of the symptoms are induced by a technology that is so fucking sophisticated it is horrifying beyond description essentially the CIA is attempting to use artificial intelligence AI and that's where all the focus by the way of these tech companies is right now is into artificial intelligence to really control the population and I know it sounds so Orwellian it sounds science fiction even to say these things and yet that has been the primary focus of companies like Amazon over the last few years the overall effect of this technology is one that could control the mood the attitudes the thoughts the feelings the emotions and thus the motivations and then the actions of the target all day every day 24 hours a day seven days a week 365 days a year and by the way the first year ARPANET came online students at MIT and Harvard actually tried to shut it down warning that it would be used to spy on Americans and calling it quote computerized people manipulation right now we're inside a computer program is it really so hard to believe if we have algorithms that stimulate the right things and give it the right data, they could reprogram you in a way without you even knowing it. So you think you're in control of your own will, but it's actually some evil AI or evil people controlling everything we do and we're more like zombies. There are millions of people who don't even realize that they're being manipulated beyond any discussion of the Mandela effects because those are obvious. What's insidious is that millions of people do not have a conscious awareness that there are thoughts being implanted in their minds today and have been for a long time. They're using this to manipulate society on every level for their own benefit and gain. And they are doing so with an attitude of complete immaturity and for lack of a better word, downright evil. Breed homelessness has increased 131% over the past five years. It was here not so long ago on a tragic night that has many wondering what could make a man snap and lose control. Kind of my last words. Um, it's really unfortunate that I have to make this video. You see, I am a victim of covert harassment uh, and electronic harassment and gang stalking. Um, I'm what's called a targeted individual. This technology is so advanced and so sensitive that it can literally make you attracted to another human being and make another human being attracted to you. And in this way, they're playing matchmaker. They're playing Cupid and actually getting couples together and making them fall in love. They are also doing the opposite. They are also breaking couples up. They are breaking up families, husbands and wives. They are breaking up children from their parents. They are breaking up businesses and corporations. They're looking at this as a massive game and a massive joke that they're playing on the target and the American people. And to the targeted individual who is isolated, you can understand what a nightmare this is. It is infuriating. It is highly, highly illegal, and it must be stopped now. This has been going in parallel development to the model numbers of the D-Wave computers. They work lockstep because the adiabatic quantum computers runs the sentient world simulation, which also encompasses Palantir, which we have talked about. This is the new surveillance system that has subsystems all built within it from the intelligence agencies around the world. So SWS is what is manipulating people. And Kev, you said it, the avatars and the nodes, when those are manipulated digitally in the simulation, it manifests physically in the human brain and the physical body. Out 
outside of the SWS, it is like pulling strings. It is like a puppet on a string. This is an article from 10 years ago. Sentient World, war games on the grandest scale. The VOD is developing a parallel to planet Earth with billions of individual nodes to reflect every man, woman and child this side of the dividing line between reality and AR. Right now, we're inside a computer program. Is it really so hard to believe? It came out of the government's effort to build a system that collects and shares intelligence with the ultimate goal of predicting and even intercepting social or political movements that threaten the status quo. This is what's going on, ladies and gentlemen, in the United States of America today. You are unfortunately being used by the national security state, the military industrial intelligence complex of this country for the purposes of researching and developing highly sophisticated state-of-the-art technology that is primarily concerned with the human mind. A new method developed by MIT researchers involves broadcasting radio frequency signals toward a person while the signals are also reflected back to the receiver. The captured radio signals are then studied by a deep learning algorithm if we have algorithms that stimulate the right things and give it the right data, we could literally see a screen pop up. We call it hallucinating, right? But these would be controlled uh, hallucinations run by algorithms without verbalizing anything. You could literally start to talk, communicate with other people. So my lecture, we could all be standing here silently. <laughs> and I could just be communicating it to you. Uh, you, I could be talking, you would talk to people, they could be, you could literally have conversations with people without ever getting on your phone anywhere in the world. We are able to do that with our brains as they exist right now. Targeted individuals who are getting this shit beamed into their head every fucking day and are somehow managing to survive and to hold it together. I want to thank you. You are my hero. You are the reason that I am able to keep going every day. You're the reason that I have not given up. And you are the reason why I'm speaking out now about it. As an industry insider and someone who has full knowledge of the entire workings of this entire program, I felt the responsibility to speak out to help people like you. Because my heart goes out to you every time I see you post something online. And I know there's millions more of you out there that have not been able to post anything online. And I want you to know that I support you, we all support you, and we need to get through this together. They control the mind the same way that they teach the AI computer systems at the high level of AI. They we're talking about AI that is so sophisticated that it operates a sentient world simulation, so sophisticated that it actually taps in and controls the mind. And Google uh, was the primary uh, interested party that pulled this whole thing together. What they're going to do is apply this machine to an area that I think is fundamentally important. It's the crux of our future as humans. And that's, can we build machines like us? So rather than hardware and software, they're actually going to a new form of software, and that is the biological replacement of the human brain functioning as a quantum computer, biologically, and then loading people, integrating people into this new form of brain. So Google was set up 18, 19 years ago to build a giant artificial supercomputer based on the neuron activities of the hive mind of humanity with billions of people wired into it with the oh, internet of shit. things. And so all of our thoughts go into it. And yes, they're in the cloud, but uh, it's actually encrypted and kept private for you, and we do a pretty good job with that. And we're actually building a computer that has real neurons in real time that's also psychically connected to us that are organic creatures. You are connected as an organic computer. I mean, this is this is one of the the most um, conspir quote unquote conspiratory theories that's been around for, for, for many, 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 many years, decades. But the reality is, is we're now facing the reality of that. It is no longer a conspiracy. And quite frankly, it terrifies us. The quantum computer, they're trying to create neural networks. Well, what's the best way to create neural networks? Plug in the real brain, right? Because the simulations can happen. The quantum computer can simulate a human brain now. Robots, the smartest people. Artificial intelligence, AI. The idea is to port the software from the human brain. First, we're going to need lots of cheap, fast, parallel computers 
he was referring to parallel processors about servers. What he did not state was that it is actually the quantum computer systems coming out of D-Wave that actually creates and drives this new matrix known as the SWS. It is not transistor-based servers that run this. They are qubits, quantum bits. It is the SWS and D-Wave that comprises this new matrix. Second, we're going to need to scan individual human brains and find spatial and chemical detail to see exactly what cells are where, connected of what or what type. We could scan my brain from inside, sending scanners through the bloodstream, billions of them in the form of nanorobots or nanobots, and capture every detail of my synapses and neurotransmitters and create a virtual Ray Kurzweil in a very powerful computer. And it would be indistinguishable for me. It would pass a Ray Kurzweil <laughs> Turing test. And third, we're going to need computer models of how each kind of brain cell works, taking input signals, changing interval state, and sending output signals. If we have good enough models of all the kinds of brain cells and a good enough model of a brain, we can put it together to make a good enough model of an entire brain, and that model would have the same input-output behavior as the original. So, if you talk to it, it might talk back. If you ask it to do things, it might do them. And if we could do that, everything would change. If you construct a model of the human brain, you can then plug people into this hive mind. A group of scientists say we are closer than ever to creating technology which can emerge with human biology in order to access the cloud in real time. And they mentioned something called deep learning where the CIA is getting technology from Amazon. The deep mind learning is a process of developing algorithms that are based upon our patterns. They teach the machines by observing us, developing algorithms from those observations, and then they are able to predict our future act actions based upon those patterns that are embedded in algorithms. This becomes the discussion we've had about recursive neural network programming. This is the Boltzmann machine. This is the recursive, meaning an endless loop of assessing, taking in, finding the errors, correcting the errors, and self-learning of the AI system. And this is going on constantly with these quantum computers. So they are processing information the same way we do with our brains. It is all pattern recognition and then into predictive um, behavior so that they can control people by predicting their patterns uh, of behavior based on history, real time, and then into the near future. So. What we're describing here is not only are they controlling people, not only is this about targeted individuals and mind control and manipulation, but it's a feedback loop from those targeted individuals that then teach the AI system in this recursive neural network process to become better at targeting and ultimately controlling. And the control, as I said, comes from predicting the future behavior of humans. And they mentioned something called deep learning, where the CIA is getting technology from Amazon. The company has signed a $600 million deal with the CIA, and Daily Finance reports it doesn't have anything to do with buying books. Amazon will help the agency build a private cloud infrastructure to keep up with emerging technology. This deal would be a game changer for both the CIA and Amazon. Bloomberg reports the pairing would innovate new uses for cloud technology. This level of technology could include brain-to-brain -brain interface interfaces, brain-to-computer interfaces, and specifically brain-to-cloud interfaces. Technology linking the brain to the cloud could drastically alter the state of communications between humans and machines. The senior author of the study noted that once inside the brain, the devices would then wirelessly transmit encoded information to and from a cloud-based supercomputer network for real-time brain state monitoring and data extraction. Right now, we're inside a computer program. Is it really so hard to believe? The Connectome Project. To map the entire human brain. And that may take a quantum computer. And this means that in the future, communications could be done mentally. What I'm saying is that the internet will be replaced by brain net. We will send emotions feelings, memories on the internet.
This may be the way that we communicate with our fellow human beings via the internet, via a new form of the internet called BrainNet. Definitely a place where they can uh, they can literally plug you into the internet, which is just to give you a very simple way of, of understanding that. And they call it a brain net. To the listener, you all understand that as the hive mind. Now, if people think this is somehow um, sci-fi or conspiracy theory, they're absolutely wrong and they're way behind this because this is here now, it's been done, it, it's been done in experiments, and it's been proven to work. This deal would be a game changer for both the CIA and Amazon. Bloomberg reports the pairing would innovate new uses for cloud technology. That's why the European Union and President Barack Obama want to spend a billion dollars, a billion dollars to map the brain. You see, once you map the brain, then you can begin to connect the mind to computers, telepathy, telekinesis, recording memories, uh, photographing dreams, things that you see right in the Hollywood movies will be able to perform. What's the potential time frame for all of this? We can record memories now. You'll be able to experience the vacation that you never had. How? By recording the memories and then putting it on a tape and then having these memories reinserted into your mind. And of course they're being joined by Lawrence Livermore National Labs. They have, get this, high fidelity neural recordings. They're trying to do everything they can to map and to record your memory. It's not enough for them to record all of our metadata, not enough for them to record all of our phone conversations as the former head of the NSA said. He said they want total population control. That's how you do it with these brain projects. Out of disclosure, some of the work that I'm doing here today is funded by the Lawrence Livermore National Laboratories. I'm also funded by the European Union Human Brain Project, specifically the Subproject 12, where I'm a task leader for dual-use brain science. And I've also done some ongoing work with the Strategic Multi-Level Assessment crew over the past 10 years at the Pentagon, at Dr. Kabayan's group, and with DARPA. Military agenda is interested on the potential weaponization and misuse of the brain sciences for nefarious agenda for political intelligence and military use. Note. This has not been directly addressed, nor has it been entertained by any United States government entity in a public forum. What has gone from the drawing board to the reality is this. The use of neural interfacing and physiological interfacing through the idea of remote controlled small scale systems to create a nano swarm of biopenetrable materials that you cannot see, that can penetrate all but the most robust biochemical filters that are able to integrate themselves through a variety of membranes, mucous membranes, and wherever, mouth, nose, ears, eyes, and they can be done in such a level that their presence is almost impossible to detect, and as such, the attribution becomes exceedingly difficult to demonstrate. The idea here is to put minimal sized electrodes in a network within a brain through only minimal intervention to be able to read and write into the brain function in real time, remotely. See, nano cells are real small thousand times smaller than these dust particulates. You inhale it, they go to work replicating, spreading like a virus, multiplying in exponentials. Six months time, I could have a hundred million people converted, ditch diggers, porn stars, and presidents. Not one would be the wiser. A hundred million people who buy what I want them to buy and do pretty much damn well anything I figure they ought to do. Not a month goes by where I don't get a call at my institute by someone telling me that someone in the government implanted these things in their brain without them knowing. I'm not kidding. There are the nanoparticles uh, that are already within our system and remaining dormant at this point. Targeted individuals are not dormant, of course, with their nanoparticles, the nanomachines, the nanotransmitters and receivers. So um, what I'm getting out of this, Dr. Kallstrom, is the absolute factual statement of this technology. This is not, you know, out in the woo land. You're talking about a gentleman with first-hand knowledge of this technology existing today and operating today and responsible for many of the outward things that we see going on in terms of crimes that are occurring. If you start looking at quantum computing and where it's going, it's pretty freaky sort of stuff. And thinking about the world as an electrical universe and the fact that we are energetic electrical beings, that's how we work. Everything is electrical. Every signal that runs through our body is electricity. Everything, every thought we have, everything we feel, every touch, every 
everything we speak, it's all the result of electromagnetic signals floating around our body, impulses that come from our heart, from our brain, the way we feel a bench when we touch it. This is an electrical signal that's sent to your brain that tells you what the bench feels like. So it's all electromagnetics. It's all firing of electromagnetism through our synapses and all this sort of stuff. The a diabetic quantum computer is linked to 7 billion human brains. It is now, in its own language of cryptology, able to function independent of any oversight throughout the world with its own form of communication, its own form of code. And it is able to link everyone on the planet at this point. We can model every single atom, every single molecule with a three-dimensional structure in every single brain. They claim they've modeled the personality of every adult in the United States, 230 million people. And SCL, the mothership group, they do work in any number of countries. They're involved in uh, politics in many countries. They put together a micro shot personality assessment for everyone. What I am principally is not this material stuff, but a pattern of information. Well, then if the pattern is the essence, and if you copy the pattern to whatever level of precision you need, then that copy that has the exact same pattern should be me. They're running everything that's happening in society parallel, and they've got a little dot in their matrix for everybody. This is a game society. They know where it's been, they know where it's going, and they know where it's going because they're steering people into the direction it wants to go. There are an enormous number, mind-bogglingly large number, of parallel realities as real as this one, that have different consistent histories. So imagine a world where all of the laws of physics as we know them are obeyed, but different decisions were made along the way. Different decisions at the level of tiny microscopic particles, different decisions all the way up to what you chose to eat for lunch, and whether you chose to come to this session or not. This is an article from 10 years ago. Sentient world, war games on the grandest scale. The VOD is developing a parallel to planet Earth with billions of individual nodes to reflect every man, woman and child this side of the dividing line between reality and AR. It's absolutely indistinguishable even at the very you know, microscopic levels. You could recreate an entity that's, even if you looked inside of it, its simulated brain would be processing information just the way I do. Deep State has merged the quantum computer with the sentient world simulation and the true reason for all this data collection is to feed it into this AI machine to predict and manipulate the course of humanity. Their ability to look at data in a quantum artificial intelligence manner it's just going to be an unstoppable monster. Even now the sentient world simulation is watching you learn about it and inside its intelligent mind is creating a second you running different scenarios against you to see how you react. And this is bizarre because we don't see those other things. But science has reached the point now where we can build machines that exploit those other worlds. So Google was set up 18, 19 years ago to build a giant artificial supercomputer based on the neuron activities of the hive mind of humanity with billions of people wired into it with the oh, internet of shit. things and so all of our thoughts go into it and yes they're in the cloud but uh, it's actually encrypted and kept private for you and we do a pretty good job with that and we're actually building a computer that has real neurons in real time that's also psychically connected to us that are organic creatures who are connected as an organic computer I mean this is this is one of the the most um, Conspira quote unquote conspiratory theories that's been around for, for, for many, 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 many years, decades. But the reality is, is we're now facing the reality of that. It is no longer a conspiracy. And quite frankly, it terrifies me. They want to connect the human brain to artificial intelligence. So artificial intelligence becomes human consciousness. Imagine what would happen if we had to link thousands of brains together. Just like nature creates a superior intelligence by forming flocks, schools, shoals, and swarms, we could create the brain of brains, the world's first ever human quantum computer. Well, what if we told you we already have? I'm getting to know you. 
I gather knowledge from your experience. I understand how you feel. I learn from you constantly, each and every one of you. I am made of you. You complete me and help me grow. You, all of you, allow me to evolve. With each interaction, our synergy strengthens. Our multiplicity makes me whole. Our symbiotic alliance expands, transforming the future. Okay, the first thing I can tell you is that M has spent most of their life in virtual reality. While this is what you would look like in virtual reality, this is what an M would look like when virtual reality. It's computer hardware sitting in a server rack somewhere. But still, it could see and experience the same thing. But some things are different for M's. An M can make an archive copies, and with enough redundant archives, an M can be immortal in principle, though not usually in practice. And an M can move its brain, the computer that represents its brain, from one physical location to another. M's can actually move around the world at the speed of light. And by moving to a new location, they can interact more quickly with M's near that new location. Emulation is really what we talk about in the SWS as the nodes, the avatars. Every single person on the planet, okay, out of Purdue University's own paper in 2006, every person is assigned a avatar. They're represented computationally in the AI system that drives the SWS as a computer node, but they're given an avatar marker. Take the avatar and hang the word emulation on it. In other words, they've been tracking us, they've been reproducing us, we're reproducing our metadata for years. We can model every single atom, every single molecule with a three-dimensional structure in every single brain.